Hello, hello. Welcome back to uh, 4th of July edition of Electric Avenue's Updates uh, 2022. Uh, actually, this is going to be the release date for uh, July 1st. And uh, I do not have a lot to show this week. It's kind of a light week, as is sort of typical with holiday weeks. Um, but I do have another little sort of project thing here that I wanted to present, and it won't be long, but uh, more personal, I suppose. So thanks for joining me. Um, okay, so let me just uh, start in by what's new this week, okay? And uh, the first thing I wanted to present is the Minions, the Rise of Gru soundtrack. And, um, well, the Minions are awesome. This is the... Uh, exclusive sky blue vinyl for indie stores um this actually features the song turn up the sunshine diana ross featuring tame impala uh that's an interesting mix um it has shining star by Brittany howard featuring verdine white of earth wind and fire saint vincent doing funky town uh, Phoebe Bridgers doing Goodbye to Love, Fly Like an Eagle by Thundercat, uh, Bang Bang by Caroline Polachek, uh, Vehicle by Gary Clark Jr. It's interesting, There's um, it's mostly like newer artists doing their takes on older hits, uh, older songs, and um, Jack Antonoff produced it. So, it will at least be good quality, and... Uh, I've heard a couple of the tracks and they were pretty good. So um, if you like retro summer kind of something to take your mind off all the craziness going on in our political landscape and whatever, um, that might might help do the trick. I don't know while you're sitting on the beach. Um, another new release this week, Grey Days, The Phoenix. Um, this is sort of the legend of uh, Chester Bennington just keeps on giving. Um, this features his original vocals remastered with pre-recorded audio. Uh, the lost music of Chester Bennington, a sort of pre, pre Lincoln Park stuff that uh, they're revisiting. Um, a couple of big reissues this week, and uh, they've been out, I believe they've been out before, well they've been out in several other forms. Jethro Tull's Aqualung, and this is the 2011 Stephen Wilson uh, remix, stereo remix, um, which is cool to have on vinyl. It sounds great. Uh, if you're not familiar with Stephen Wilson, he's from the band Porcupine Tree and is famous for remastering lots of artists' uh, catalogs. Um, everyone from Yes to... Uh, King Crimson, um, Jethro Tull, uh, lots of different people. So that may be of interest to people. Also, one of my favorites of all time, Roxy Music's Avalon. And again, this is an album that has been out and been remastered many times. Uh, but this is the uh, Half Speed Master Edition, 180 gram vinyl cut from the original quarter inch tapes at Abbey Road Studios. Um, this features more than this and the title track, both complete classics. Um, maybe that's the time to get a good clean copy of that for some of you. Um, there's a debate sort of going on about what is the, um, what are the benefits of half speed mastering? Do they really sound that much better and I hear people coming down on both sides of the fence saying some people say appreciably better I hear more detail in acoustic guitars and things like that other people say and eh, not so much I think it really depends on which album it is and who did the work in a lot of cases um, it's not just the remastering process but uh, anyway and that being said here's another remaster XTC's White Music. Uh, this is, I believe, their second or third album since um, Barry Andrews is still in the picture from uh, 
shriek back now and um this is newly cut from masters approved by andy partridge pressed on 200 gram super heavyweight vinyl they've been doing a whole uh series of reissues on xtc uh, ironically stephen wilson did some of the um earlier ones i don't think he had anything to do with this one um but it's an early record, a classic that kind of got them noticed in, uh, what, 1978 That's when that came out. Uh, on a lighter note, Julie Roberts, My Best Friend's Wedding. Uh, no, she's not singing. This is the soundtrack, uh, been re-released. Uh, people like Diana King, does anyone really, I mean... <laughs> She was popular for a few minutes in the 90s, but uh, say her version of I Say a Little Prayer uh, has Ani DeFranco doing Wishing and Hoping, uh, Amanda Marshall. I mean, there's some names here that I haven't heard in like uh, 15, 20 years. Sophie Zelmani, Jan Arden, um, Tony Bennett doing The Way You Look Tonight, Mary Chapin Carpenter doing I'll Never Fall in Love Again. I mean, it's a rom rom-com chick flick. Uh, and, you know, some of those soundtracks are kind of fun to revisit. So um, the only negative I'd say is it's not very cheap, but it's the first vinyl reissue. Black and White Streaks Tuxedo Pressing. Well, of course, because it's a wedding movie. And then uh, a new release on vinyl, the new Shinedown record. Uh, Shinedown's uh, Planet Zero uh, is the name of that. Um, and then some CDs. I wanted to kind of throw in and show you. Uh, let's see, there's the new UB40 featuring Ali Campbell and Astro. <laughs> and uh, I was like, isn't that the name of the Jetsons dog? Uh, it's called Unprecedented. So UB40 still at it. They sort of went through a period there where Ali Campbell, Ali, was not uh, the lead singer of the band. It seemed kind of odd because he was sort of famously the lead singer, but I think it was, again, an issue of brothers not getting along, and apparently that's been semi-resolved, and he's back. Uh, another release this week of note, uh, Tedeschi Trucks Band. The uh, This is the Part 2 Ascension uh, of I Am The Moon series. There are going to be four of these. Uh, they're coming out on CD one at a time throughout the summer, and then all four vinyl come out the same day in September. So be on the lookout for that. This one actually has seven tracks on it. The last one had five, although some were quite long. So um, bigger than EPs, more like mini albums. So uh, other sort of random things. Um, kind of like a classic uh, all-rock band guided by voices. I mean, they just crank them out. This is their new one, Tremblers and Goggles by Rank. Um, then also another band that returned from semi-obscurity, the Dream Syndicate, and their album Ultraviolet Battle Hymns and True Confessions, getting very good reviews. And also finally here on CD, uh, and uh, Anhoni, Anahani, I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry. Antony, um, formerly Antony, joins uh, Hercules and Love Affair for the new album In Amber. And uh, there's still some dance elements on this from what I hear, but also uh, they compare it more to Dead Can Dance because it's gone more gothy in a way. So if you're familiar with Hercules and Love Affair. All right, so I told you that was short. And I'd actually like to spend the last few minutes uh, talking about records that I would like to see happen on vinyl. And um, these are things that have been out on CD for forever. And for some reason, they're either non-existent on record, super hard to get on record. And uh, I don't know, I'd sort of like to open a discussion. And at some point, I mean, I'm not, I don't have a lot of viewers necessarily, but I hope that someone from a record company might eventually see some of this stuff and go, oh yeah, why haven't we done that? Maybe throw it on a record store day thing. It kind of depends on what sorts of um, discussions get open. First of all, let me say that there are the artists that are infuriating 
because they make their records way too hard to obtain on vinyl. I'm talking about people like Frank Ocean, who does it all on his own, and many of the copies that are out there in the world are bootlegs, and um, he's sort of doing himself a disservice. Same thing with like Chance the Rapper, who I'm not sure has any official physical product. Um, you can kind of go into more hip-hop people like Megan Thee Stallion and uh, such. Uh, Kanye West is somebody who has big holes in his catalog where um, the first couple albums are available. Uh, you can get My Dark Twist, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and 808s um, off and on when they come in and out of print. Uh, which usually sends the prices up because they become sort of scarce at times. Um, and then, you know, there are certain albums like Life of Pablo and uh, Yeezus that if you see them, Graduation, those are all bootlegs out there. There are not any, as far as I know, I have not seen any official releases on those. And if they were officially released, they were in very small supply. You could say the same thing about Tool and some of their albums. Um, talk about a frustrating band um, dealing with physical product and kind of angering their fans and their uh, independent stores that support them in the process. Um, but yeah, certain albums like 10,000 Days, Anima, are, they're almost non-existent. Um, so... Uh, there are some bands that are kind of, I would call, or artists, I would call sort of legacy artists that have big holes in their catalogs as well. Um, people like Paul McCartney, who, uh, you know, there are certain obvious kind of late 70s and early 80s albums that some people say, well, are those even um, worth sort of reissuing? And I, I hesitate to say that, you know, yes, somebody of the statue of Paul McCartney stature should uh have those things out and it's he's been doing certain um like expanded reissues of things but there are some that he's very slow dragging his feet on and they've been jumping around instead of going chronologically um bob dylan is sort of similar in some ways where there are um parts of his catalog that are uh really almost not impossible to find. You can maybe find used copies out there that are in good shape, but to have a good sort of remaster, may, maybe his label thinks that there's not a market for some of that stuff I don't understand. And then you've got bands from, you know, 40 years ago now, or pushing 40 years, uh, that have big gaps like Duran Duran and Bon Jovi, um, where they're starting to kind of pay attention to some of those things. I've seen little inklings of Duran releasing a few records uh, later this year. Um, I suppose Morrissey would be another one, but uh, that sort of uh, depends on many factors, which um, include the fact that he's not very popular right now because of some political things that he's said. So while there are albums that might be really worth reissuing that were great, like You Are the Quarry, Ringleader of the Tormentors, you might not see them for a while, even though they keep talking about it, just because of they're worried that there's not enough of an audience to buy them right now. Um, other artists I wanted to mention that have things that go in and out of print a lot, uh, Radiohead, R.E.M., The Smashing Pumpkins, uh, I should say REM, uh, everything seems to be running on a 25-year uh, reissue schedule, and that can be infuriating because we wait and we wait and we wait. Nobody's getting any younger. Uh, other bands that seem to fall into this are the Chili Peppers, Tame Impala, Outkast, uh, even Green Day this past year had some problems getting their records made. Um, American Idiot is getting much harder to find except on expensive imports. U2, The Cure, and Depeche Mode, uh, sort of stalwarts of 80s alternative, are getting difficult to find that way. And even someone like Tom Petty has some holes. So, and with him, it's more like things have been made and then they're just out of stock and you can't find them for long periods of time. 
Uh, I know one band I should mention that is sort of infuriating that you can't find many reissues of their stuff would be Steely Dan. Um, except for like Asia, I'm not too sure there's too many uh, things that you could find there. Um, Elton John has so many albums and many of them have not been reissued or remastered on vinyl. Um, Billy Joel, you know, sort of, uh, or or they'll do like a, a reissue but not really do anything special with it. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so here are, I thought I will pick out my 10 dream albums for me that I would like to see put on vinyl soon, sooner than later, just so I'm alive to see it and hear them, and um, it would be great. Uh, actually, it's 10 plus 1, because I had a hard time limiting, so there's 11. All right. Uh, first one I'm going to mention, Tom Waits, Bone Machine. Uh, there are original copies of this out there. They go for around 100 bucks or more. Um, can they not make this album more readily available to people in general? I feel like, um, you know, Rain Dogs was out there for a little while on a music on vinyl pressing, but pretty much everything between then and the mid-late 90s um, are very, very difficult to find, and it's not like there were a lot of albums, but this one was an Island Records release. I think it's one of his best albums of that era. I get questions about it all the time to this day. Uh, there's really no excuse that that cannot get made. Tom had started doing an entire series of reissues of his albums, so all of the Warner ones from the early years are basically done, um, and Island is completely, seemingly neglected, and that goes for, like, Van Morrison, too. I mean, there are how many Van Morrison albums that need reissuing, and I guess Van is just not really interested. I wouldn't put Van on my list, but this is on my list, so that's my first choice. Second, Elvis Costello's When I Was Cruel. So, uh, another career artist, many, many albums. Um, and this one was from 1998, I believe, around that period. Um, they've been kind of doing Elvis's catalog, hit and miss. Um, they've been doing uh, sort of music on vinyl reissues of the Warner I've just seen Spike and Mighty Like a Rose and uh, uh, the Juliet Letters have been listed and um, you can get certain things and then things sort of dry up until the early 2000s and then you can start finding records again. But this was a really great album of his and it came out right around the time he did the album with Burt Bacharach and that's been available. I just think this album it might have been out there a little bit here and there, but it needs a good proper reissuing, remastering that uh, is more widely available. Um, an artist that I showed today was Roxy Music. I will show this artist, Brian Ferry, who the lead singer of that band, and his solo catalog is very highly neglected, and this album, Olympia, is a great, great album and um, up there with Roxy's Best. In fact, it started as a Roxy Music album, and uh, I believe even people like Brian Eno contribute. Um, I guess we sort of get hung up on the band stuff and the name Roxy Music that we sort of forget, hey, Brian has a ton of solo albums, and they did do uh, Boys and Girls last year, which was great, uh, one of his best albums, but uh, an album that you can generally find a lot in used bins here and there. So give us something that we haven't seen. You know, I'm very fortunate that I found a copy of Mamuna, one of his other albums, in a really dingy used record bin about eight, ten years ago for ten bucks. That thing is now over uh, $200 online, and even with like writing on the back of it, it's still worth a lot of money. So, and that's another album, and uh, pretty much any of Brian's 90s albums. So, oh, one of my favorite artists and a highly neglected album, Prince, the Love Symbol album. Uh, so there's been rumors that Diamonds and Pearls is the next box set to come out. 
We just got the Gold Experience finally for Record Store Day. Uh, there are other albums of his that are really great, and this is one of his best from the early 90s in that era. Um, this had the single Seven, My Name is Prince, Sexy MF. Uh, those are the songs that I think people would kind of remember from it, but it's actually a really great Prince album, and uh, or I guess the symbol that was its first appearance as uh, on one of his records uh, that needs to be made and I'm also kind of like you know he's passed away um, come on estate another person who passed away come on estate is George Michael patience this was his really last major solo pop album that he did uh, 2004 um, yes, he lived for another 12 years after that, but this is a great album. Um, they're reissuing Older, uh, his mid-90s album with Jesus to a Child and Fast Love. That's coming out in uh, a week or two, and I think that they need to pay attention to Patience, too, um, because while the singles were things uh, amazing, was kind of a big hit, in the UK, Shoot the Dog and Freak were kind of big hits. But um, I think songs like John and Elvis are dead, Round Here, they're very like personal kind of songs um, that, you know, I think uh, my mother had a brother, very beautiful personal songs from George, and he's no longer with us. So he and Prince and Tom Petty, I've mentioned, um, those people need a little more curation attention. Um, okay, w moving along a little bit. Um, so I think that women also in general are semi-neglected a lot of the time. Um, female singer-songwriters and, uh, I don't know if like record companies just don't think that there's enough of a, um, an interest in them. I see like, uh, People like Tracy Chapman, like your that first album should be in every record store, and they I don't know if they choose not to make it or if she's not interested. Uh, the album with "Give Me One Reason" was kind of popular. Um, then you got people like uh, Natalie Merchant, who I've seen. Um, I just got Motherland in as an import, but uh, Ophelia. I mean, there, she had some pretty big solo records and then all the 10,000 Maniacs stuff that goes in and out of print and is really hard to find, um, you know, and maybe they think, well, there's not enough of an audience. I can't understand that. So, and somebody who I think does not necessarily have a massive audience and they have finally reissued some of her albums, but this one is still missing. Kirstie McCall, Titanic Days. Uh, she was married to Steve Lil Lillywhite, famous producer for U2 and The Smiths for a long time. Also uh, sang backups on Smiths records and uh, had great albums of her own. I'm so glad they put out Tropical Brainstorm finally in a very limited edition, though, I should say, in the UK. That album needs to be a little more widely available and she needs to be more promote. Her legacy has just been completely sort of neglected for somebody who contributed so much. And Titanic Days was a great album, and a lot of con contributions from Johnny Marr of the Smiths. Um, so that's a personal wish. Another one, Amy Mann, whatever her debut album. So lead singer of Till Tuesday. Uh, this was her solo debut. It was a great, great album that got completely lost um, because it was on a label that was in the process of pretty much folding when it was released. Um, there's other Amy Mann albums like Lost in Space that I think need reissuing. That came out on music, uh, uh, Mobile Fidelity and sells for hundreds of dollars now. Um, Beck is another artist that falls into that where he's released some things on Mobile Fidelity and actually I should throw his Midnight Vultures into this category as an album that needs reissuing. But I'm giving voice to Amy today and I uh, love her as an artist and more of her albums 
need to be out there. Thanks to her for putting out Bachelor Number no. 2 for Record Store Day a couple of years ago. So we did get that and all the Magnolia songs, but there are more big gaps in a very large catalog. And one other artist that I want to name check in that, because we go back a lot to artists of the 60s and the 70s, the Joan Baez, the uh, Judy Collins, I mean, a lot of those people, Linda Ronstadt, they had a lot of albums, uh, and a lot of them are probably in need of reissuing as well, but I'm kind of focused on my era, and here's another one that I love and I don't see enough of, Suzanne Vega, and you would think that at least the first two albums would be out there all the time, especially the one with uh, Luca, Solitude Standing, and that one um, you can find in used bins here and there, but it's a real audiophile kind of album because of the textures and the quietness of it. And a lot of her material is, and she's a great singer-songwriter who, um, you know, while she doesn't have the biggest voice, um, has some really amazing writing material, sort of like Amy Mann. And um, although they're different kinds of writers, uh, this is a great album, Nine Objects of Desire. It kind of was sort of on the borderline of uh, kind of coffee house jazz and folk music, uh, but great, great album. I would also say like the album before this, 99.9 .9, uh, Fahrenheit, is another fantastic album, and you can find used copies of that fairly um, not break the bank expensive. But these are records that, you know, I it's unfortunate because the artists, I think, because of where they landed in the label system, um, some of their records have gotten swallowed up or there's not enough of a what they think is a um, interest in reissuing that stuff. Either it's the artist who doesn't want to fight the fight or the label who's like, uh, there's not enough interest out there. So, um, I mean, it's a mix of both. Here's one I do not understand at all. The first two Seal albums are in dire need of reissuing, and this one had the big hit Crazy, uh, also had Killer and Future Love Paradise, um, a big top 10 hit uh, singles and album worldwide, and the second album as well, the one with Kiss from a Rose. Those two albums should be out there all the time, and as much as people focus on artists like Sam Cooke and uh, Ray Charles and whatever, you know, look a little to the future. Um, and uh, gosh, even people post sort of Michael Jackson and Prince's big era. Um, Seal was great. Now, granted, his career has been sort of like up and down. Certain albums are a little more like um, middle of the road than others. But the first two were great and they were a little of their time. Um, they had a lot of sort of like electronic-y influence and whatever, but uh, stunning albums. And uh, Wendy and Lisa of Prince's band played a lot on those, and they were produced by Trevor Horn. You don't get more superstar producer than that. So another one of my favorite albums of that era is The The's Dusk. <laughs> they don't really give you album pictures here. But uh, Matt Johnson, here it is on the back. <laughs> you see it sort of blown up. Um, this album has some of my favorite songs ever written. Uh, Love is Stronger Than Death in particular. And um, Johnny Marr plays on this record. And it's fabulous. And it needs to be in print. I have a friend who has an original copy. I don't, I don't dare to ask how much he paid for it. Um, but... They started putting out some the, the records, the early one, uh, what, Soul Mining, and then it just stopped. And come on, Sony, Columbia, Epic, whatever, give us the rest of them, please. Um, I don't want to have to hunt down originals of all of those if I can help it, because um, they're also ridiculous to uh, get uh, the cash together for them in some ways. I'm sure they sound good, but... Um, maybe. Uh, all right. And, uh, I'm going to throw in massive attacks, 100th window. 
another band that has been very spotty on the reissue front. Uh, and this album is, seems completely ignored. We got Hell I Go Land, uh, which was after this album and had a bunch of guest stars on it. That's actually out of print now and is going for a lot of money. Uh, it was on the shelf maybe two or three years ago. Um, and then early Massive Attack stuff, you've been able to find Blue Lines and a um, couple of those earlier ones. Obviously, um, Mezzanine was available for a while, and it's out of print now, and that should not be happening. And this album, I don't know if it really ever appeared much except its first release. And there's at least three songs on here with Sinead O'Connor, some of her best, most edgy kind of writing and singing um, in a political sort of venue. And uh, it wasn't really um, a complete success at the time critically because the critics were sort of like, oh, where'd the hip hop go? This is more of like a, a quiet Nine Inch Nails sort of record. And uh, but it's a great album. I would also throw Nine Inch Nails in there because like albums like Year Zero and uh, Downward Spiral, I can't remember the last time I've seen that, or The Fragile on Vinyl, and those are albums that need to be out there all the time. So while there's a lot of vinyl out there being made, um, a lot of it you start looking at and you go, now how many more copies of blah, 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 blah do we need when there's all these things that are sort of like, you know, it's been maybe a decade and these things are still sitting on my want list and I don't know what you guys want I'm sure that there's plenty of things that you can come up with but that was a quick rundown of 10 or 11 so my video is getting to run over half an hour now they aren't usually this long but I did want to kind of open that topic for discussion a little bit today so thank you for watching if you had the patience to watch that whole thing and I'll see you next week with uh, whatever's new release that time and probably start giving some uh, hints about what's around the corner new release wise. All right. Thank you again and take care. Have a wonderful uh, holiday weekend and see you next time. Peace.